Hey there, my name is Curtis Lucas and you're watching Empire Building. Now, I know I've been away for a little while and I tend to get accused of disappearing whenever the price drops. I hardly think that's true seeing as how I've done an awful lot of videos this year and we certainly know it hasn't all been sunshine and roses. Having said that, the reason why I haven't been uploading as many videos uh, is a couple of reasons. One, I do have a construction business to run and I've just started a brand new project. We broke ground just a couple short weeks ago and the preparation and now that we're actually on site, there's a whole lot that I have to manage. On top of that, it is really hot here right now. I mean like really hot. Foo, what is hot? I told you again. Were you born on the sun? It's damn hot. I'm still recording in my garage and I've had to turn my mining rig off because it is just way too hot. I'm even recording with the garage door open and I'm still sweating. But we've got a pretty important event that's about to take place in just about two days where Bitcoin will witness the largest single downward difficulty adjustment in its entire history. Of course, this is the result of the crackdown on miners in China over the last couple of months. The effect has been dramatic. And interestingly enough, while we did see a price drop, most likely due to a lot of those miners having to sell their Bitcoin to raise capital so that they can afford to relocate their operations or in some cases just exit the industry. We're gonna talk a little bit about that but mainly in this video, I do want to get into the weeds. We're going to talk a little bit about the technical aspect of this because just listening on Twitter and other places, I found that there is a pretty significant misunderstanding over exactly what happens to Bitcoin and the profitability of other miners during a time like this. Too many people actually think that whenever the hash rate drops, it actually leads to a immediate direct increase in mining profitability for all other miners still on the network. And this is not true. In fact, over the last couple of weeks, since we've really seen these numbers start to plummet, the hash rate on the network, it's actually led to a significant decrease in profitability for everyone who's remained. So I'm just gonna take this as sort of a teachable moment to help people understand just a little bit more about how Bitcoin mining functions and how the system self-corrects to deal with even events such as this. So here we can see that the next difficulty adjustment is currently forecasted to occur uh, late Friday afternoon, approximately one day and 20 hours from now at the latest. Now, this is a moving target. It actually keeps rising, uh, one, because the diff the hash rate on the network has continued to fall. And it's constantly tracking how long it's taking to mine each individual block. And depending on how that occurs, we'll adjust these numbers. But the point is, we're getting very close. If it doesn't occur on Friday, it'll be early on Saturday. Currently, it's forecasting a difficulty adjustment of approximately 25%, negative 25%. This is by far the largest difficulty adjustment that Bitcoin has ever witnessed. Looking quickly, we can obviously see what the result or the cause of this has been. The difficulty or the, sorry, the hash rate on the network, at least according to Y charts, pegged it at a maximum of almost 200 exahash. Depending on what your sources are, I mean, there appears to have been some kind of a spike there. But generally speaking, most of the sources uh, peg that maximum hash rate at approximately 170 or so. You will get varying numbers depending on the sources that you look at. But no matter where you look, you're going to get essentially the same picture. Just somewhat different maximums and minimums. Just a couple of days ago, we saw the hash rate on the system dropped to approximately 58 exahash. That's insane. If we were to bottom out somewhere around there, then the North American publicly traded Bitcoin miners would end up controlling a large percentage of the overall hash rate on the Bitcoin network by this time next year. Obviously, like all things in Bitcoin, it's always a moving target. So 
It remains to see how all of this hash rate is going to get redistributed, which of course is a good thing, but it's also going to take a significant amount of time. And the consensus tends, seems to be that uh, some of this equipment will never go back online. The cost of relocating it, the risk of it being damaged along the way during transit, the differences in uh, electrical standards in other countries might make it impossible to export this equipment. And also, as we know, the facilities that are required to house this equipment take a good deal of time to build out. Couple that with all of the other supply shortages that we are all familiar with in just about every single supply chain. And it seems pretty clear that this is going to take a significant amount of time for itself to play out. So this is a clear advantage for any miners that are already uh, up and running and growing rapidly. But as I said before, this drop in hash rate does not automatically correlate to an increase in profitability for the remaining miners. This effect will take time and that has to do with the difficulty adjustment. For the last two weeks, what we've witnessed is the drop in hash rate while the difficulty has remained constant. So at least for the last two weeks, the, the mining profitability for all remaining miners has dropped drastically. This is a graphical representation of all the blocks contained during this difficulty adjustment period. It's known as an epoch. This is Bitcoin's 341st epoch. In each epoch contains 2016 blocks. This is the same representation that we were looking at in a recent video where we discussed the taproot activation, where we were looking at Marathon's red blocks, where they were voting not ready for taproot activation. Obviously, all of that has worked itself out now, and taproot has been activated, or at least the minimum amount of votes required to allow it to proceed. But normally, these epochs are meant to uh, allow Bitcoin to establish a set of controls to control uh, when to adjust its difficulty rate to ensure that approximately one block is mined every 10 minutes. This is what is going to allow Bitcoin to maintain that maximum cap of 21 million Bitcoins mined by the year 2140. If more hash rate is added to the system, then blocks will start getting mined faster meaning on average the time between blocks would drop from 10 minutes to less than 10 minutes when this network sees this it adjusts the difficulty making it more difficult to find blocks thereby increasing the time to get back to an overall average of one block every 10 minutes so what's been happening over the last two weeks well the last difficulty adjustment was on june 13th june 13th was three Sundays ago. So approximately every two weeks is when these difficulty adjustment periods take place. So the, set, the next difficulty adjustment should have occurred on the 27th. Currently we're forecasted for Friday. So we are currently a full five days late, meaning it's taken five extra days to mine the same number of blocks than it normally would have. This is why miners are currently less profitable. So this is what I mean by it's going to take time for them to begin to reap those benefits. We can even go inside these blocks and have a look at uh, exactly what's going on. We, while I was talking, there was a block found about eight minutes ago, but prior to that, 49 minutes. So it was 40 minutes between blocks. I've been keeping an eye on this and that actually has been uh, pretty standard during these last couple of days since we've really seen this uh, hash rate hopefully bottom out. The, currently this estimator is um, predicting that the difficulty should adjust to about uh, 14.5 here. So that would actually put Bitcoin's difficulty back down to levels it hasn't seen since January of 2020, a full year and a half ago. That is astonishing. But unfortunately, as a result of this, like I said, those benefits will be reaped after that difficulty um, adjustment has been made. So we won't be seeing any of that appear in 
any of these companies uh, quarterly earnings reports the next time round. We'll have to wait another quarter for that to actually have any impact on their bottom line. But that doesn't mean it's not going to have a direct impact on the price because we all can see this. I think that is uh, the main reason why we've seen Bitcoin mining stocks and also that they haven't they were not severely punished during this last dip that we witnessed in Bitcoin, despite it going below $30,000. Most of the mining stock investors seem to have shrugged that off. But the other question here is, what does all this mean for Bitcoin? As I've stressed before, that the energy that Bitcoin consumes is for securing the blockchain and has nothing to do with processing transactions. By some measure, Bitcoin's uh, hash rate has dropped by at least 50%, meaning that as of now, Bitcoin is now using half as much, at least half as much electricity as it was just a little over a month ago. So anyone who wanted Bitcoin to be more efficient, well, it just happened. But does that make Bitcoin less secure? Not exactly. Remember that for anyone to try to attack Bitcoin, they actually have to have access to this equipment and the power to run them. So often people kind of vilified uh, the miners over in China, somehow assuming that they were all gonna unite and attack Bitcoin. When obviously this couldn't have been further from the truth. The people over there that have been mining Bitcoin, obviously they do it for the money because the incentive structure works but also because they believe in this technology. You don't spend millions of dollars building out a farm under a regime like in an environment like that, taking that kind of risk if you don't believe in this technology and you don't attack something that you believe in. My hat is off to these miners in China who have had their entire worlds turned upside down and they've been highly underappreciated for far too long while people vilified them. And they've never done anything that would indicate that they would ever attempt to do anything to harm Bitcoin's network. But now it falls to the rest of the world. And some of those miners, I'm sure, are already relocating to other parts of the world, like Kazakhstan, Russia, the United States, Europe, Canada. It only leads to further decentralization. But even while they were in China, you, you can't just argue just because they're in one geographic area that somehow it's all controlled by a single entity. But for a nefarious actor to somehow attempt to attack Bitcoin, the equation still remains the same. They still have to acquire enough hardware and deploy that hardware, pay for electricity, just to attempt to attack Bitcoin, which in the end has the same factors at play here. Once you understand what can actually be done with a 51% attack, it becomes a whole lot less scary than people make it out to be. The bottom line is if anyone were to attempt it, they would just end up losing money. And it, the effect it would have on the network would be next to nothing. Many blockchains have been attacked in this manner. Ethereum Classic has been attacked three times that I'm aware of. They don't do it to Bitcoin because there's no benefit to it. Even at its reduced capacity, we're talking billions of dollars would need to be spent to accomplish nothing. So if anyone out there is afraid that this sudden drop in hash rate means Bitcoin is less secure, do not worry about it. That level of hashing power isn't necessary to provide sufficient security it's just how the incentive structure works. As long as it's profitable to mine, the miners will continue to hash. Only now, as the price continues to rise, all the miners that are left behind are going to be even more valuable than we had previously thought possible. If this bull market is truly not over yet, then this got even better than we could have possibly imagined. That is, assuming this isn't over yet. I had mentioned in my last video that I was keeping an eye on this line here. This is a line, a trend line drawn on a logarithmic time scale. I had pointed out that in previous bull cycles, we had never crossed below this logarithmic trend line, at least not until after the bubble had burst. Well, we passed below it. And when we did that, I myself fell for the trap. I did become 
uh, a lot more cautious. Now, turned out I was right. The price did drop, but the mining stocks, as I mentioned, chose not to follow Bitcoin down to the bottom. And we've even seen the price further stabilize over the last uh, few weeks. Despite the death cross that we've also witnessed between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average on the daily chart, I remain optimistic. Obviously, nothing is quite for certain, but considering this environment and considering uh, the effects that they've had, these are truly unprecedented times, but the opportunity, if we're right, is about as good as it gets. So I think that's about all I wanted to cover for the time being. I know there have been a lot of developments throughout the space. I'd love to spend time talking about all of those things, but if you're paying attention, most likely you already know about them all. I wish that I could say that I'm sure I'm gonna be making uh, regular videos like I was before, but honestly, between this heat and other obligations of mine. I'm not gonna be able to do as many regular videos as I once did, but I am gonna try and hit on more of those important topics rather than just covering news events that you can simply read for yourselves. If you are interested in engaging more on a regular basis, I would highly recommend joining Patreon. It would be an enormous support for the channel. It'll give you access to Discord where just about 24 hours a day, there's usually somebody around on there that you can bounce ideas off and discuss any current events that might be going on. That's all for this one. Now let's get back to Empire Building.